I'm standing on land in Boone County that looks like a moonscape, with parched gray dirt and jagged blasted off mountaintops in the distance. Donnie Facemeyer is a laid off coal miner. He helped strip this mountain back when he was working for Pritchard Mining. A year ago, you'd have, I'd have laughed at you if you'd have told me they were gonna, mine, they were gonna farm on a strip job because it's all just shot rock. But uh, these plants seem to be doing real good in it. These lavender plants are little more than scrawny bushes now, barely a foot tall. But Facemeyer is hoping this mountaintop will soon be turned into fields of purple. He's one of the farmers taking part in a new project launched by the West Virginia Regional Technology Park in Kanawha County to grow lavender on former strip mines. Turns out the plants actually thrive in the dry, rocky soil that surface mining leaves behind. This job is what's keeping Facemeyer and his family from leaving the state. Me and my wife were going to until I ran into this job. We were going south. Just anything. We were just going to sell everything we own and take off. Start all over. Like Facemeyer, other new farmers are hoping the lavender industry can provide a steady source of income to support them in West Virginia. It's a new industry here in Appalachia, but the idea was enticing to a handful of people who signed up for a training class. Even some who moved to West Virginia for the program. Some came from Texas, others from Ohio. One family came from Florida. Sky Ritchie and his wife Deborah say a fellow veteran told them about the Lavender Project, and so they sold everything they owned and moved to the Mountain State. Came up here as the veteran program to learn how to grow lavender. Everybody loves it. So we moved up here to turn a new chapter in our lives. As part of the program, the Ritchies get paid an education stipend of $10 an hour for the six weeks they spend learning about lavender and how to grow it. The program is called Green Mining, and it's just getting started. Last year, it received a $1 million grant from the Appalachian Regional Commission's Power Initiative, which helped pay for salaries and student stipends. But can it work? We reached out to more than a dozen lavender farmers across the United States, and each told a similar story. It's a lot of fun and a great way to earn a small side income. But only two farmers, both in Washington state, said they make a full-time living from lavender alone. Shelly Keeney has a small lavender farm in her backyard in Huntington, West Virginia. It's a peaceful place. The scent of lavender wafts through the air. Mm, I love it. <laughs> I have about 100 lavender plants, and I do pretty, pretty well with it. Uh, but as far as having a full-time business, I would probably have to have, um, let's say, 10 acres at least to just solely do lavender. The plants Keeney has keep her busy enough, especially since she also has a full-time job. Inside her garage, she has a small workshop. Fresh lavender hangs from the wooden beams to dry. Keeney shows me the jams and jellies she sells at farmer's markets. This one is a strawberry jam with just a hint of lavender. You don't want to overpower anything that you use lavender in that you're going to eat for culinary purposes. And this is great on um, scones and biscuits. She says she gets requests from farmer's markets across West Virginia, way more than she has time for. One product that's in especially high demand is essential oil. Maybe it's our busy lives and we all need to calm down a little bit so people are looking for ways to help them calm down and lavender's going to do it. <laughs> the coordinators for the Green Mining Lavender Project want to tap into the essential oil aromatherapy industry too, but they'll need to produce at least 2,000 gallons of oil to sell to the larger companies. At the Green Mining Headquarters in South Charleston, a former Dow Chemical coal testing lab has been transformed into a distillation station for lavender. Project coordinator Marina Sawyer says green mining is prepared to meet demand. They want Appalachia to be the new home for USA-sourced lavender oil. It hasn't been that big a crop in the U.S. before. Unless you buy uh, locally grown or something that was made out of, out of uh, Washington uh, or, or by some of the other smaller companies, um, then it's probably from overseas because that's where most of the lavender comes from. Lavender could bring in some revenue to southern West Virginia, but it's unlikely to bring back the thousands of coal jobs that have disappeared in the past decade. 
West Virginia's chief economist, John Deskins, says that although coal production has bounced back some... But it's still far down from where it was a few years ago. So uh, ultimately in the state, we desperately need to diversify our economic mix. He says what the state's economy desperately needs now is more innovators, people who will try out new business ideas. You know, because nobody knows for sure, right? People like me study the economy, uh, you know, other government officials study the economy. We try to figure out... Um, you know, what might have potential, what might not have potential, but ultimately it, it's up to an entrepreneur to experiment and they'll find what works and what doesn't work. Back up at the Boone County strip mine, the students in the program are busy planting baby lavender plants. Retired Army officer James Ross is helping troubleshoot a problem the crew had yesterday. They accidentally planted in the wrong area. Now they have to go back and replant the crop. Ross is one of the program instructors. In the Army, he led missions for a battalion of 11,000 people. Now he's channeling that energy into teaching West Virginians to farm. Have we got a 100% solution right now on helping the state's economic problems? No, I'm not saying that. Um, but it's the right step forward. It's the right step forward to taking this, um, again, unusable land that uh, most people considered previous to that and using it for something good. Not everyone has stuck with the program. Last summer, 16 people signed up for the class, but only half completed it. The second course had 20 graduates. Many of the trainees say they'll grow lavender on a strip mine, especially if they're able to lease the land for cheap. The coordinators with the green mining program say they're applying for another federal grant to help them transition to a co-op model. If they succeed, the lavender farmers would be the owners of the entire business and operation within three years. Mm -hmm.